these floating containers and uh, getting pretty healthy. I'm no longer on any medication. So you're not uh, eating any cooked food? I eat cooked food. I oh, these, are, food. these are raw food you're eating? This is all raw food. I make sure I have at least 35% raw in my diet. I'm closer to 50% raw now. Oh. Because I'm starting to not like meat. <laughs> Alright? It's just, I think the more you go green, the less you like meat. It just is a natural occurring thing. Right? Right, right. Um, even my roommate is almost like off of meat now. Mm -hmm. Like we have meat twice a month maybe now. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, my roommate comes home from work and the first thing, boom. So explain in. which one is what? What is this? What are these? Th these are blends. Blends? Yeah, these are blends. All so you put mixed seeds and uh, let Basically, it Basically, this is my seed drawer. Right? Huh? And like I have canola in here. I have a, a, a spring salad, eastern blend, broccoli, decon radish, lentils, mung beans, uh, brash, brasha broccoli blend. What's that? That's mustard. Uh, that's another empty thing of mustard. That's uh, buckwheat. I do sunflower shoots too, and peas. Um, I do have wheat, but I only use this wheat to show people why they shouldn't be eating wheat. And the whole reason is, is if people are familiar with rock candy when they were kids, we had a rock candy, it was solid sugar. Mm -hmm. And it was solid sugar and you could eat it and it, was it had a particular sugar flavor. Well, it's wheat. It's sugar from wheat and when you sprout the wheat, and have a bite of it, it'll remind you of rock candy as a child because it tastes just like rock candy. It's that sweet. There's that much sugar in it. This is why we shouldn't be eating wheat. It's inflammatory. All sugars are inflammatory. It doesn't matter whether it's organic cane sugar for your coffee, it's still inflammatory. Use it very sparingly. Very sparingly. And do you add salt or something to make them taste or just, just, uh, just like that? Basically what I do is I take, I'll take a tray of sprouts like this and I'll put half on one plate, half on the other plate. Uh -huh. Then I'll add some nuts. Nuts. Some dried blueberries maybe. Uh -huh. I'll shave some Parmesan cheese. I'll squeeze a lemon on it and you're oh. golden. That's a meal. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And like for instance, like this is broccoli here. Mm -hmm. Now, this tray of broccoli sprouts is equivalent to eating a steak. In fact, it's probably better for you would, than a Would steak. it be about half a spoon of uh, seeds before you put them here? This is a teaspoon of teaspoon. broccoli seed. Right? Uh, a package of broccoli seed mm -hmm. would make about 30 of these trays. Ah, so one a day for right. a month. Yeah. So roughly 50 cents a day. Yeah, roughly 50 cents a day. Now, if you were to buy this at Save-On, say, mm -hmm. that's $5. For just one day? For one day. And, and uh, multiplied 30 days, that's $150. A month. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you could be spending, literally, a couple thousand dollars a year on broccoli to eat to protect yourself against cancer because the broccoli sprouts have 50 times of cancer-fighting sulfanes that broccoli itself does. And it's also chock full of prebiotics and vitamins and minerals that you're not getting in your diet today. The most important thing that sprouting has to offer is it's chock full of live enzymes. We don't have live enzymes in our food anymore. Our food is dead. This is why we're taking probiotics. Because there's no prebiotics in our food anymore. Mm -hmm. We used to get prebiotics from live food. Food isn't live when it's shipped two weeks ago. The enzymes are gone. Yeah, yeah. So, how many days does it take to uh, this from takes the seed? Five to days. Five days. Five days from the seed to the sprout. So you have to have more than uh, if you want to have every day, you need to have more than one set. Yes. What I do is I basically run six, and I eat the bottom tray. Oh, run, run six trays. Yeah, I run six trays. Right. Uh, and the top one is the newest one, and the bottom top one, one is the newest one. What I'll do is I'll eat the bottom tray. Uh huh. I'll clean it. Uh -huh. Put it on top, put more seed in it, fill it with water. The water goes down through every tray, uh -huh. waters them all, and in the bottom tray, I feed my house plants. Oh, they I see. love it because those enzymes that we don't like, the that's in the water. Huh? Fantastic. Right? So your plants very respond very well to them. And yeah. You can't get organic food cheaper. Hmm. In fact, this is the lowest cost food on the planet, 
with the highest amount of nutrition, with the lowest caloric intake. The kit is only one time purchase. The, the, the seeds are very cheap. Like yes. you say, 50 cents a day is almost nothing. You know? Yes, and that's for the expensive seed. <coughs> That's the most expensive seed, 50 cents a day. For this, should, uh, this should be taken up by volunteers who are feeding like food banks and really yes. um, what do you call, financially challenged people who yes. are eating bad food and chronically sick. They can't even go to the hospital because they don't, don't have medical cover. Well, I've been approached uh, recently by Live on Land, the oh. permaculture uh, organization out of Africa. Uh -huh. And they're looking at possibly sprouting in Africa. Their issue is going to be heat. Because above 75 degrees, you can get mold issues and stuff like that. Below, you have no problem. So that was Richard Miller talking to me about the benefits of sprouting organic seeds as one of the most inexpensive, most economical source of high-quality, glyphosate-free, non-GMO, organic food source.